My name is Michelle Chen, and I lead the team that is responsible for the autonomous navigation of DART spacecraft to hit an asteroid. The DART mission is the first planetary defense test mission. Our goal is to hit and impact an asteroid to understand and study the momentum transfer so that we could potentially later down the road, if we need to, deflect an asteroid on its way to Earth. I'm the SmartNav lead. SmartNav stands for Small Body Maneuvering Autonomous Real-Time Navigation. SmartNav, I always consider it sort of like the brains. And so the camera, Draco, is essentially the eyes. The algorithm has to identify and hit the target in the field of view of the camera. We're flying at over six kilometers a second. It essentially occupies a pixel up until possibly 30 minutes prior to impact. And then that's where everything gets really exciting. And so you could just imagine if it was a human being joysticking this. Because we don't know for sure what the asteroids look like, our simulation gives us the capability to use different asteroid shapes and asteroid objects to see that our SmartNav algorithm performs against all these unknowns. We're super excited and nervous as well. I love pushing the boundaries and I love the application of math into real world problems and then seeing it actually doing its thing. To me, there's nothing cooler than that. Vision lock. All right, we expect to be in precision lock soon. We are waiting for confirmation of precision walk. MSC, this is SN5. Go ahead, SN5. We are precision locked and still tracking Dimorphos. Yes. So I'm going to hear again oh, from Elena right. Adams. Um, this is great. Um, this is Dart MSC on D2 Mach. So this was our last milestone. At this point, we're going to be uh, working towards Dimorphos. I expect we're going to do some burns. We're about 4,500 miles away from Didymos and Dimorphos. So let's see what happens. around Didymos. So this is an important test for planetary defense mitigation strategies in case we ever have to do this for real. The Lowell Discovery Telescope is one of many telescopes around the world which will be used to study Didymos and Dimorphos. It's really a global coordinated effort. And what we're looking at here is a large 4.3 meter primary mirror that's in the middle of the telescope tube here. Up at the top is a secondary mirror. The secondary mirror up top there is what is focusing the light down onto the instruments and allows us to take images with the camera that's located down at the bottom. This is maybe one of my favorite hidden rooms of the telescope. We're like standing inside the telescope. Underneath the telescope, 100 tons above your head. <laughs> Held up by this, and this, which is cool. It's sort of, as you can see, the, the highest peak around here. Just over 8,000 feet. I come up here for sunset. It's, you know, sun setting right there. It's, it's perfect. For DART, we're going to be collecting images of the night sky. And typically, an observer would be here in front of one of these consoles controlling the instrument and taking images like these as they're coming in off the telescope. DART is really a sort of before and after experiment. We need to understand the system before the spacecraft intentionally impacts, and then we have to understand what the outcome of that impact event is. As we watch from the Earth, Dimorphos will pass in front of Didymos and behind Didymos. What we will be doing with those images is measuring the brightness of Didymos in those images and looking at how that brightness changes. And those dips in brightness allow us to measure when uh, these eclipses happen and measure the orbit period of Dimorphos. And so you have essentially a fixed star field here. All the white dots are stars of different brightness. And moving through this field is Didymos and Dimorphos, which again, we can't distinguish them as discrete points of light, but we have a small object moving through the field of view. 
So after impact, we will then be able to go back and start observing intensely, looking for those neutral events, those eclipse events of dimorphos passing in front of and behind Didymos. And on each one of these frames, we're measuring the brightness to assess whether or not it's undergoing one of these events where dimorphos is passing in front of or behind, and using those to determine the orbit period of dimorphos around Didymos. This is such a cool experiment, it's such a singular experiment, using the ground-based telescopes like this one and others around the world to, to watch the system and see how it's affected by this impact event, because that's really what's going to give us the answer to what did DART do at the time of impact, and that will be exciting to see how that evolves over the days and weeks following that impact. All right. Open up these airways in the Mission Operations Center. We'll stay plugged in all the way through impact. Remember, at this point, five minutes out, no more commands to smart nav will be possible. The team is watching it just like you and me and the rest of us. So impact, we are at 1,100 miles away. Also, our window for sending any commands to the spacecraft is done. <laughs> Contingency is done. <laughs> This is a great vibe in that mission right. operations center right now, Lori. It really Ooh. is. Um, they are so excited. And you know, I, I'm honing in looking at these images as we get closer and closer, and you look at Didymos, and just you're starting to see the this physical body appear there. It's incredible, just incredible. I'm still having a hard time believing this is real energy coming in near real time. Yeah. Yeah, but you've been watching it over the last, you know, 30, 45 minutes go from just being a collection of individual pixels and now you can actually see the shape and the the shading and texture of, of Didymos and we're going to see that same thing with Dimorphos as we get closer and closer. This is so cool. Never we're before seen Uberi. images of Dimorphos will be come into stark relief. Absolutely. A few seconds before impact. Didymos, it's amazing. Yeah. Yes, zeroing in right on target. And we're now dropping the clock and we'll go by loss of signal to confirm impact. Right. Yes. Imagine we'll get that loss of signal and then we'll hear from Lena Adams again, um, letting us know. That I feel like we'll know. I feel like that'll be a crystal clear <laughs> signal. I think so. I think we're starting to see more. Um, more resolution. In fact, look at that. Didymos has even gone out of the view. We're now just seeing Dimorphos. This is remarkable stuff. Oh my goodness, look at that. Looks like control system settling down. Angular rates look really good. I think we're going to get the investigation team some good pictures. Wow. No, no, come on. We can do better than that. <laughs> Starting to see those individual boulders there. We can see uh, shadows of uh, various rocks on the surface. Impact. It's amazing, guys. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Unbelievable. Yeah. Looks to me like we're headed straight in. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Eight, yeah. Seven, oh, six, wow. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh wow. Awaiting visual confirmation. All right. Let's see. We got it? Waiting. Waiting. And we have an impact. Eternity for humanity in the name of planetary defense. Woo. Fantastic. Oh, fantastic. Oh. What? Oh. 
What a moment. Very few words can really capture this moment. This is beautiful to watch. <laughs> What a team. What, what a team and what an accomplishment. Team. A few weeks ago, they had their last dress rehearsal. They were getting emotional at the dress rehearsal. They're like, this is this is crazy. We're getting emotional. This is not the real thing. I can only imagine what they are feeling right now. <laughs>